Cornell West appeared on CNN a few days ago on the Caitlin Collins show, but now he came to the real heavy hitter of the network, Mr. Anderson Cooper. They had a 13 minute conversation. Here's some of the conversation between Anderson Cooper and Green Party candidate Cornell West. I, I just spoke to the, the foreign minister of Ukraine. We're going to have that interview later on. I, I think if you said to him, you're standing with the people of Ukraine in solidarity, and you're saying that they are just victims in this proxy war, he would say, you're out of your mind. I mean, they, they, are thankful. Well, I, He's, they are thankful for NATO. They are thankful for the U.S. You can call it the American empire. but The ones that are alive are thankful for NATO and thankful for the U.S., Bakhmut, 75,000 of them dead in one city by yeah. itself. The, one, the ones who talked to Anderson Cooper on TV. Yeah, yeah. right. The, the ones who you're in the, touch with. Who do you say he was one, in touch the with? The, the minister of Ukraine? Drive, driving around Kiev in a Mercedes, according to Cy Hirsch. Exactly. The ruling class of Ukraine, who's siphoning off a lot of the money that we're sending them for, you know, weapons. Uh, yeah, they're very, very thankful for NATO and, and the West. Um, the ones who have died on the front lines, I don't know if they could do it over again, how thankful they would be to NATO and the West. It's, it's unfortunate that I have to make these points while he's rocking back and forth. You know, I'd like to see a little, a little more of the left jab, you know, but he's, he's dominant. I mean, they are thankful yeah. for all these countries rallying to their side. I mean, I, I've been there. You've probably, you've probably been there as well. I, I mean, it is a horrible it's an invasion, I mean, of, of killing civilians and cities. Oh, oh, no, it is a criminal invasion. I'm yeah. not denying it's a criminal invasion. But what I'm saying is you go back to the men's talks, you go back to March one month after the war began, my brother, I'm calling for ceasefire. I don't want to but see you the suffering call for of ceasefire. Vladimir Putin isn't really listening to what you say or I say or anybody says. It's, I mean, he's doing what he wants to do, just like he slaughtered. I mean, he, well, he didn't, was, you saw he, what he did actually, to Grozny. As, you saw what he did to Grozny in in the '90s. I mean, he flattened that city. Civilians were trapped in that city. No, the world didn't come to the rescue of Grozny. He did exactly what he wanted to do. I mean, unchecked, he will slaughter people. Well, I mean, un, unchecked, he will slaughter folk. Unchecked. What we did in Iraq was slaughtering people. Uncheck what we've done in other places. Well, but, Uncheck but sir, uh, variety Dr. of West, other empires. Dr. Do West, that. Nation really, states do that, though. No, brother, I understand. And they're wrong. And when they're wrong, you have to pull up. You have to, you have to yeah. point it out. I, I res look I, again. I respect you. You know, I love you. Um, but oh, I, I, I do either. think I do think it's inappropriate to compare the Russian bombing of Grozny uh, and what we witnessed there with the the war in iraq i mean uh, to, to say that is that right is that right anderson cooper it is inappropriate i mean what an outrageous statement that is it what a jaw droppingly outrageous disgusting statement that is so much so i decided to edit together a little clip we're going to get back to this interview in a moment but there's a little clip I put together in response to that because I just could not believe that he said that. I should it shouldn't have shocked me. It really shouldn't have. I mean, that's par for the course on corporate media. I don't know why I was so taken well, they, aback. Well, they, by well, they, well, they, well, they literally when the when the war broke out for a second, it, it was stunning to me because they spend so much time uh, virtue signaling about their racial sensitivity. Uh, for a minute there, the mass dropped. You, know, you had the reporter who said, you know, it's very strange to see this in a country where, frankly, they look like us. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. In a country uh, yeah. where they look like us, where it looks this is a European country where this is happening. We expect this kind of barbarism right. when it's inflicted that, on that's people the, in the that's third the world. That's the coding here. That's the coding. Why? Why does he not see them as equivalent? I mean, partly it's because. He's, a he's Roman, on the inside. He's a Roman living in Rome. Right, exactly. Right? What the what the Germanic tribes do is barbarism. What we do is civilized. Right? But So there's that. But it's also, I believe, based on the evidence, as soon as this war broke out, before they got a hold of themselves, they all were talking about how fucking white these people are. Now it's a travesty. That was amazing to me that they, even if they thought that, didn't realize you, you can't say that out loud. Because they yeah, spent no, so much time it all goes away. attacking people for saying shit like that out loud. 
Like, how did they not realize you can't when say you that? When you support war, there's nothing you can't say. There's nothing you can't say because yeah, there is yeah. there 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 is no institutional uh, thrust behind any oppositional force. Like, you're just not right. going to get op- right. you're not going to get called out by anyone with the power to do anything to you for saying the wrong thing. That's why all of that stuff just goes out the window when they're talking about war. We're going to get back to the interview in a moment, but I had to just introduce my own evidence here in the form of this short clip, which got to be up around 400,000 views on Twitter by now. That's why I'll play it for you uh, right here. So a little bit of a game break, folks. And if you're on Twitter, please share this video around. It's inappropriate to compare the Russian bombing of Grozny uh, and what we witnessed there with the, the war in Iraq. I don't think it's accurate to compare the pummeling of a city by Russian artillery with civilians inside, pummeling every single day with, with the intention of just destroying and flattening a city with actions the U.S. took. There you have it, folks. See, that's why I'm calm tonight, because I don't have to blow a gasket screaming about it, because I think that video says everything you need to know. What do you mean? That's different from pummeling a city? You worked for CNN at the time. It was called a shock and awe campaign. Shock and awe. The initial bombing mission in Baghdad was meant as a violent show of force to demoralize Iraqis and bend them to our will. There is a word for that. That's called terrorism. That's called terrorism. And that is what we did in Iraq in 2003. And how fucking ignorant and asinine are you that you would say, well, what the Russians did to Grozny is not comparable to what we did in Iraq. It was, it was not nearly as bad. This was a shock. Look at, look at what I just showed you. It is just, it is unbelievable. Unbelievable that, that he said that. Let's go back to the interview. We'll watch a little more. Or, I mean, innocents are killed. Oh. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the horrible things happen. Horrible things happen. Uh, horrible things and happen, what we says Anderson Vanderbilt. With <laughs> the, the war in Iraq. We I mean, got to start uh, calling to, to them to say that. Yeah. Were, I mean, innocents are killed. Oh. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the horrible things half happen. A million, half a million Iraqis killed, my brother. Well, half a million. Yeah, I, I, listen, I was there. I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I know. What? Wasn't was that there, just the was, children? Was, I, I certainly understand. Well, that, you, you're talking about the half a million Iraqi children yeah. that were killed as a result of the sanctions. But in the initial bombing, in the initial shock and awe campaign, just that night that the war started, what was it, March 16th, 2003, something like that, mid-March, you know, in the subsequent days, about 7,000 Iraqi civilians died from the initial bombing raid, more than double the casualties on 9-11, which is something that we blamed on them. And I love some of the people responded to me on Twitter by saying, well, it's different because um, with the Russian bombing campaign, uh, they were bombing in response to a false flag terrorist attack, which they themselves committed. <laughs> Okay. All right. Point taken. Different situation. Different situation. I stand corrected. I stand well, corrected. Well, 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 there, well, there's a there's another thing about a lot of the people who signal all of the uh, you know concern for people of color that that ends right at the water's edge, man. They they almost never have a foreign policy vision. And they and they talk like this, like Anderson Cooper. It's different when we do it. That that's their foreign policy vision. It's different when we do it. We right. do it because we have to. We don't really want to. And anyway, we're rescuing these people from horrible regimes and dictators. And no, he said he goes back. To, I know yeah. Saddam Hussein was was awful too. He does. I mean, he just, does. He drops that un- in there. He drops unbelievable. That in there. Just absolutely well, well, incredible. Well, which look, that is always. I mean, at least in the modern era, you know, old school, ancient world imperialism, they didn't need a justification. They did it because they could. By the time you get to the British Empire, they feel a need to justify themselves. And that's when you get this idea that we're, uh, you know, 
destroying the village in order to save it, right? Because we're liberating them. We're bringing them civilization. We're enlightening them. That that Victorian era idea of why we do this, that that's still the justification. And in the modern world, all the more so, because you can't just say, as Donald Trump did, that was the problem, really, that a lot of them had with him. Yeah, no, we need the oil. Yeah, we're going in. <laughs> you know, you just say that shit straight out. Nothing about uh, you know, some grand moral scheme, um, which, you know, is, is just obvious. If we really invaded countries because of the way the governments treat their people, there are a lot of countries we'd be in right now. Right. Of course. Of course. I also saw a lot of Americans Absolutely. getting killed and I saw, you know, the, the horrors of Saddam Hussein. I'm just saying, uh, I don't think you? it's accurate to compare did you? Or did you hear the about pummeling of a city what by Russian artillery with know. civilians inside, pummeling every single day with, with the intention. Listen to this idiocy. Listen to this incredible, incredible idiocy. I'm just saying, I'm just saying I don't think it's accurate to compare the pummeling of a city by Russian artillery with civilians inside, pummeling every single day with, with the intention of just destroying and flattening The pummeling of a city? The pummeling of a city? Are you fucking, I mean, it's just, it is shocking. Care. It is absolutely shocking. I know I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry, but it's just un fucking leavable We called it a shock and awe campaign. That's footage that's famous. That's famous footage. CNN has watermarked some of that footage on YouTube. That's why I couldn't use that source. Th that, that footage is everywhere. Everybody has seen that. E everybody knows that. What is that if not the pummeling of a city with no regard for civilian casualties? That was called a shock and awe campaign. Sorry, we, we do have to finish the interview because we got other stuff to do. But I'm just I'm like in a loop here. <laughs> well, this, uh, you get actions the your father. You yeah, right. There's your father in you. <laughs> exactly. Billions inside, pummeling every single day with, with the intention of just destroying and flattening a city with actions the U.S. took. I mean, uh, we, I don't know. Look, you know, the wars, horrible things happen in wars. Horrible things happen in war. Look, my great-grandfather was one of the robber barons <laughs> that right. made this country the shithole that it is. And I am at least six generations removed from being qualified to opine on the matters of matters of great import to the people of this nation. That's why they gave me this job. If I actually had any insights to share, they wouldn't let me within a mile of this desk. Right. Well, exactly. Exactly. And look, we'll play more of that interview on Friday. That was the only part I cut because... Like I said at the top of the show, I don't want to do all Cornell stuff all the time. So we do have to get into more of that. That was just more a reaction to just how unbelievably ignorant Anderson Cooper has to be to say that and how unbelievably pathetic his audience must be to take him seriously after hearing that. And Cornell oh, should man. have jumped down his throat right then and there. He tried to get in the word 500 million dead Iraqis my brother like he tried to get in there but he should have been much more forceful when he starts talking this shit about how well you know they didn't just pummel us we didn't just pummel a city and, and into a, a, a what you have to jump down his throat there like it's just it's really really yes. a horrible thing to how say on the air and and to not and and that is an opportunity to communicate to the viewers that this guy who they consider an authority on perspective is a new world order hatchet man it was anderson cooper who played a really really critical role in killing the bernie sanders momentum between nevada and super tuesday he's the one who gave him the you know i heard you love castro line on 60 minutes right so mm -hmm. i mean this is this is a guy who i don't know maybe it's because he's a vanderbilt maybe he feels he's on the take in some way beyond that who the hell knows but that is an elite perspective that is that ought to have no credibility outside his dinner parties or outside the studio at CNN. You have to dismantle that when you hear it. That's why I made that video, and that's why it's gotten you know got to be close to half a million views by now. I would hope. Please clap.